Welcome to the Trinity's Podcast, where we explore theories about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you love God enough to think about Him? Episode 281, Introducing the Unitarian Christian Alliance. This podcast and a nearly identical version, which has just been released at restitutio.org, is our public announcement of a project that's been about a year in the making. The Unitarian Christian Alliance is a new parachurch organization whose mission is to promote Unitarian theology and to connect like-minded believers across the globe. It's my privilege to serve as the first chair of the volunteer board of this nonprofit. And I must say, it's a great honor to serve with such smart, dedicated, and servant-hearted Christian men. Here's the conversation we recorded when we had the chance to get together recently in Tennessee. The board members introduce themselves, and then we go on to explain our vision for this new organization. It's an unusual podcast episode. We actually have four people with us today. So we're going to go around the room and introduce ourselves and say what our role is in the Unitarian Christian Alliance. My name is Dale Tuggy. I was a philosophy professor for 18 years, but I quit academia in 2018. You might know me as host of the Trinity's podcast. My family and I happily live in Middle Tennessee and attend Higher Ground Church in White House. And I'm serving as chair of the Unitarian Christian Alliance. And I am Keegan Chandler. You might know me as an author, uh, the author of the 2016 book, The God of Jesus, and the forthcoming book, Constantine and the Divine Mind. Uh, You may have seen some of my lectures around YouTube. Currently, I am teaching at a house church in Houston, Texas, where I live with my wife and two wonderful sons. And I am uh, blessed and honored to be serving as the vice chair of the Unitarian Christian Alliance. My name is Mark Kane, and I live in the Cleveland area. I attend a Church of the Open Bible in Bedford, Ohio. I've grown up in the Church of God General Conference, so I've been a biblical Unitarian my whole life. And I'm currently serving as the secretary for the Unitarian Christian Alliance. Hi, my name is Sean Finnegan. I am the lead pastor of Living Hope Community Church in the Albany, New York area. I'm also the host of Restitutio, a podcast that comes out each week. I have a number of theological presentations that are out on YouTube, and I am serving as a board member in the Unitarian Christian Alliance. So all of us hold to Unitarian Christian theologies, and our backgrounds are somewhat different and we're here today to talk about this new nonprofit parachurch organization. So, why don't we start with just what are the needs that we see out there among non Trinitarian Christians, and how are we trying to serve those needs with this organization? Well, you know, Dale, one of the things that struck me when I first became a Unitarian, coming from a Trinitarian background, was the lack of fellowship opportunity that there seemed for me. I had been in Christian circles for my entire life. I'd been a part of several different Christian denominations, and yet I didn't know a single Unitarian. I didn't know of any Unitarian groups or churches or anything like that around me. That problem seemed to uh, become exacerbated when I suddenly became faced with the daunting challenge of finding fellowship for myself and for my family. So that's definitely, I think, an ongoing struggle for many people today. Yeah, and I know you and I, Keegan, and Sean Finnegan, we've had people follow our work, our writings, podcasts, in your case, your book. You know, they say, thank you very much. You've helped us to see that biblical theology is Unitarian. Oh, by the way, where do you go to church and how am I supposed to find somewhere to go? There weren't a lot of great options that we can tell them. So one of the things that we're trying to do is provide an obvious place where people can search and look for like-minded believers. I'd like to read out just part of an email I received four days ago, and this is absolutely typical of emails that I received either through Living Hope International Ministries, through ChristianMonotheism.com, through Restitutio.org, or just through personal email. This person writes that for 30 years— They have known the true gospel of one God and his begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And this is actually somebody from Germany 
who then continues to say, already my grandfather and even his father and my father had identified the Trinity as not being from the Bible. And then he wants to know where there are other people to fellowship with. Where are they? And he's asking in Germany in particular. I get emails like this all the time for years. And, you know, this one lives in Wyoming, and that one lives out on the East Coast, and this one is way over here in Australia. There is, I believe, in our time, a groundswell of people who are coming to see that the Father of Jesus is the only true God. It's an exciting time to live, but the question is, how can these people possibly connect with each other? What we're trying to achieve here, then, is to create that community, and this is the age of the internet, of course, so everybody is on the internet, at least in modern countries. And yet you go to the internet to try to find a way to connect, and you're stuck with using Facebook or, I don't know, other groups that aren't designed for that purpose. So you have to filter through a lot of stuff. I'm excited about creating a community, and we're going to do that through the website, unitarianchristianalliance.org. And uh, I have a software development background myself, so I was very excited to help out with that. And I think this is going to create a kind of community where people can come together and say, I'm a Unitarian, and this is where I'm at. I want to know if there's others near me. When Keegan was first considering what is he going to do, you know, where would he even go? What, does he go on the internet and say, I'm looking for a non-Trinitarian church near me? So the Unitarian Christian Alliance as a website is going to then function as a central pool, a resource for others to go to and find out, okay, I'm in the Ohio area, or I'm in Idaho. I mean, goodness gracious, where am I going to go in Idaho? And yet you could then find somebody. And if you don't find somebody, well, you could still join this organization. And then the others who might be stumbling into it realize, wait, there's somebody just down the road from me. I know one fellow who, uh, who came to this understanding, he was from Canada, and he found a few people through the internet, and he asked and found out there were two churches near him. He was like, I didn't even realize they were there. It's time for that to end. The internet is so powerful. We have so many tools available. You can already go and read all the other opinions about these texts and find out that it isn't a monolith of thought out there. Why don't we have a community on the internet where we can find each other and finally fellowship? Yeah, you're right, Mark. I think with all the stories that we hear, the basic issues boil down to, on the one hand, there's a lack of community available for uh, Unitarian believers. And on the other hand, there's just a lack of exposure out there in the world of Christians to Unitarian ideas. For a quarter of a century, I spent a lot of time in a lot of different denominations, and I never heard of the Unitarian option. I didn't know there was another interpretive option for the scriptures. And I sit there and I think about how many people are sitting there in the pews today who maybe they would be very interested in what we have to say, maybe they would find our interpretation of the scriptures very, very helpful for them in their Christian faith and life, and yet they've simply never been exposed to it. That's why the Unitarian Christian Alliance's mission is really twofold. On the one hand, it's to address the problem of a lack of community, and it's to address the problem of a lack of exposure. And we do that, first of all, by providing an online network of individuals, of different groups, of churches, And we provide people that opportunity to find like-minded believers that they can fellowship and share in these truths with. And then on the other hand, our mission is to promote Unitarian theology in the world today. And I think like uh, Sean and, and Mark, like both of you said, we live in the age of the internet. I wouldn't be here spending time with you guys today if it wasn't for the internet. And I think you're right. We are at an unprecedented point in history. We have such an, an incredible scope of access to information really unprecedented in human history, and I think it's about time that we take advantage for that. Yeah, and I think one of the problems that we have is that there are a number of lists of churches or scattered individuals that are out there on the internet, but they tend to, to be just narrowly focused on one particular group. It is a lot of work to try and sift through all those different lists to find something close to somebody, and a lot of problems with those lists myself included, whose ministry does have such a list on our website, is it's really hard to keep up with it. It's hard to guarantee that that house church or that one individual over, do they even still live there? Are they still interested in receiving people to uh, have Bible studies and get to know? I think the UCA is really going to solve a lot of these problems for a lot of different groups, not only in the United States, but around the world, where 
people can find each other. And it's sort of like decentralizing in a sense and crowdsourcing this issue of community. What it's going to enable is for people to list themselves and really take initiative on their own to find others. So rather than somebody sending me an email or Dale an email or somebody else say, oh, do you know anybody out here in this place? No, now they'll be able to go on themselves and they'll be able to find other people and then they'll be able to list themselves so then they can be found as well. When the Trinity's podcast returns, another aspect of our mission, which is creating a shared sense of identity. And also, do we really need the you word? Part of what we're trying to do is create a broad sense of identity as Unitarian Christians. There are various groups out there. They have wonderful qualities in different ways. They disagree with one another on some side points, but uh, they're not going to necessarily tell you about one another or help you find a place that you might fit a little bit better. They feel maybe that they're in competition with one another. Um, We just want to help the movement of Unitarian Christianity thrive. One problem is that people don't even have a category to put non-Trinitarian Christians in. Like, so you don't believe that God is tripersonal? Oh, so you're a cult? Well, no, actually, we're not a cult. We're not in a cult. We're not associated with a cult. Uh, Well, isn't that just cult? Are you Jehovah's Witnesses? No, we're not never been Jehovah's Witnesses. There's there's no association there. We're just Christians, but we think the one God is the Father and that Jesus is a man, the Messiah. That's what makes us Unitarian Christians. <laughs> and we have different opinions about certain other things, such as spiritual gifts or quite how you understand the book of Revelation, but we're united just by that. So why don't we talk about the name Part of the problem is there isn't a category that people put non-Trinitarian Christians in other than cultists. And another part of the problem is there's hardly a good word. We actually were deliberate about picking the name Unitarian Christian Alliance. Why did we pick that name? What other terms could we have chosen? Why did we pass over those other terms? So one term that's current that a lot of us would use to describe ourselves is biblical Unitarian. So why didn't we just call this the Biblical Unitarian Alliance? Right. So Biblical Unitarian seems to suggest a rather narrow Christology, sometimes historically called a Socinian Christology. That's what most people associate with the term Biblical Unitarian. And what we're looking for is really uh, more of um, an inclusive and broad coalition of Unitarian Christians. When you boil it down, a Unitarian theology is any theology in which the one God is the Father alone. So members of the Unitarian Christian Alliance, they're simply not going to hold to the doctrine of the Trinity, the idea that the one God is tripersonal. They're also not going to hold to so-called oneness or um, modalist doctrines, but they're all going to believe that the Bible teaches that only the Father is the Most High God. So at the end of the day, You know, UCA members are all going to believe that the one God is the Father. They're going to believe that Jesus is a human being who is distinct from, who is subordinate to the one God, that he's the Messiah, the King of Israel, the man that God raised from the dead and exalted to his right hand. Now, UCA members may ultimately hold to a variety of opinions about Jesus' preexistence. Some may say he had his origins in the womb of his mother. Some may say that he first existed in some other form uh, before his birth. But at the end of the day, a Unitarian Christian is going to agree that Jesus was and is a genuine human being. And of course, that the one God is the Father alone. And what we believe is that truth is so powerful. It's so needed in the world today that we not only can, but we must unite together on that point and promote that very helpful interpretation out there in the world today. And we believe that there are many Christians out there 
who, while disagreeing maybe on some of the uh, secondary points, on these very central uh, vital points that they need fellowship, they're looking for it, and can come together and, and really make a difference. So that's what we're trying to establish. Yeah, and part of our idea is to allow people a time and a place to figure out what they think about some of these things. When I was going through the agonies of trying to figure out what I was theologically, to find out that the one true God is the Father, well, the New Testament says this repeatedly. And then you realize that that actually rules out that the one true God is the Trinity. Okay, you're not a Trinitarian anymore. It's really not that hard. Okay, but what about these passages where it sounds like Jesus existed before his conception? Passages that sound like God created the world through him, that he came down from heaven and things like that. And what about the Holy Spirit? What do you make about all that? These are harder issues. I was a Unitarian and was aware of other historical Unitarian Christians, but I didn't know what I thought about some of these things for some years. And uh, eventually I was persuaded of what people call a, quote, Socinian or biblical Unitarian view, but it took a while. And about that word Unitarian, you know, in the 20th century, there's this non-Christian religion called Unitarian Universalism. And that's just not Christian in any sense. The way I describe it is it, it sort of sprouted out of the corpse of a Christian non-Trinitarian movement in America. And it's kind of a unique one-time deal, but the word Unitarian was coined, as, as I understand it, in the late 1600s in England to describe people who before that had been referred to as Socinians. And Socinians just wasn't a very helpful term. It, Socinus was a guy who lived in... Eastern Europe, and he was, you know, more than 100 years before these people. They weren't like disciples of Socinus in the year 1689 in London. So they just wanted a descriptive term. Well, you got Trinitarian, so why not Unitarian? It describes the theology. God is not tripersonal. God is the one person that is the Father. So it's a perfectly good word. In early America, for instance, you had people known as Unitarian Christians. There were Unitarian Congregationalist churches. And so in a sense, we're just trying to reclaim that word. Unitarian, universalist, whatever, that's a different thing. But in a Christian context, it refers to Christians who think that the one God actually is the Father instead of the Trinity. Other terms have been suggested, but there's no replacement has really taken hold. A friend of mine suggested monotarian. Okay, that's, that's fine if you like that. Biblical monotheism, Christian monotheism. Sometimes we just talk around it and we say, well, I came to this understanding uh, at my church. We do this a lot, but, um, you know, why not go ahead and have a word for it? So we couldn't see a better alternative, even though it's swimming against the tide. We said, it looks like we should call ourselves Unitarian Christians. Even if people disagree with using that name or wouldn't use it for themselves, the purpose of the organization still stands as a useful tool to the entire community. You may individually, as you interact with people, call yourself whatever you want, but you can utilize the website and create a network with other people who would find you, who might otherwise not find you, whatever the name happens to be. Yeah, I mean, maybe your background is one is Pentecostalism and you figured that, well, actually one should distinguish between God and the Son of God, and now you want to call yourself post-oneness or something. We don't care what you call yourselves. We just want to serve people who agree with us about kind of what the core truths are in our view. When the Trinity's podcast returns, the UCA Affirmation. We decided to organize ourselves around what we eventually called the UCA Affirmation. Yeah, I've got that right here, Dale. The UCA Affirmation is a simple theological statement, and it says this, We believe and proclaim in accordance with the Scriptures that only the Father of Jesus is the one true God, that the unique man Jesus is his Messiah or Christ, that God the Father sent Jesus, gave him his message, empowered him, and endorsed him with deeds of power, wonders, 
and signs that God did through him. That's Acts chapter 2. That Jesus obeyed God, laying down his life so that we can have the hope of resurrection to eternal life. That God raised Jesus from the dead and exalted him to his right hand, making Jesus the one Lord under the one God. And that Jesus will return to fully establish God's kingdom on earth. Of course, the short way of saying that is that we believe that the one God is the Father alone, and Jesus is his human Messiah, who is now exalted as our Lord and Savior. You know, this is a, a very simple statement, and we believe that if you can agree with this statement, then you can join the Unitarian Christian Alliance and stand uh, alongside other like-minded Christians in our mission to build faithful communities and to advance the cause of this precious truth that the world is in sore need of right now. In addition to that, we're looking to present a unified, a united face to the world and to other Christian groups to say that, yes, we might have a lot of different particularities in our individual groups or our house churches or brick-and-mortar churches, but yet this is what unites us, and this is what gives us sort of like a, a public identity that then... I think, can start to coalesce and make an impact. I mean, the simple fact is, this is not just a minority report, this one God understanding, but it is often, as Keegan mentioned earlier, never even heard of in so many circles and even in many academic arenas, this is not even an option on the table. So how do we do that? Well, it's deliberately no platforms. Like, as yeah. soon as they find out about this, you're not in the book, you're not in the journal, you're not at the conference. How do you solve that? Well, you coalesce, you team up together, you pool resources, and you you make it hard to dismiss us. I think this is something that a lot of us have been looking for for a long time, and yet a, a lot of people are intimidated by or concerned about because they're they're thinking, well, oh no, there's this new big group that's going to gobble up each of these little groups, and and that's not at all what the UCA is about, right? And I think you make a, a great point about uh, identity. There are many types of Christians out there. There are charismatic Christians. There are reformed Christians. There are all these types of Christians. Now, each of these groups that would identify in that way, they all believe a bunch of different things, but they do have several core beliefs that unite them together. Evangelical Christians, for example. So, what people should understand is that by becoming a UCA member, you're not necessarily endorsing any other member's beliefs or any uh, beliefs of any particular group. But what you're doing is you're choosing to stand alongside of other Christians in order to promote Unitarian theology on the one hand and the building of like-minded communities. If you look at the affirmation, I mean, we all go to churches and every one of those churches' doctrinal statements would have a whole lot of things that are not addressed in the affirmation of the UCA. So for instance, church leadership, uh, who can teach, how does the church make decisions? How do you understand uh, the millennium or is there one? What about speaking in tongues, things like this? There's, there's gonna be a whole bunch of things. It's not the creed of a church. And I think it's important to understand what the UCA is and what the UCA isn't. Uh, if it was a church, you would have to have a full drawn out statement that addresses all topics of concern that will govern our life together. But we're not a church. We're a ministry that's trying to help and encourage churches and people looking for churches or other forms of fellowship. It's not a denomination. We don't do the things the denomination does. Again, if we were, we'd have to have a fully articulated statement of belief. One thing I compare the UCA to to help people understand is the pro-life movements. You're pro-life because you think, well, this abortion has to stop. There are people getting killed here. And say you go to a pro-life rally and you're sitting right next to Roman Catholics, atheists, fundamentalists, Baptists, Methodists, who knows what, and all kinds of people. You don't care because you're there to promote pro-life. And you don't think, well, I'm tainted like I'm somehow promoting the Pope or promoting Buddhism because there's a Buddhist sitting two rows over. You know, we're here for pro-life. So... If you're part of the UCA, you're not there to promote whatever that guy over there is promoting as a part of his group, but you're in, the, you're in it for the shared interest of promoting Unitarian understanding of Christian scripture and doctrine, basically. That's why you don't have to uh, 
expect answers to all your questions and, and why you don't have to worry about people that don't quite agree with you. If your group is the most uh, correct one, we would like to help it and then everybody will know. We can also have friendly arguments about these things that divide Unitarians once we establish a baseline of fellowship, but we're trying to get that far. And that's also why the Unitarian Christian Alliance is not a threat to any existing groups. The UCA exists to aid, to come alongside, that's what parachurch means, it means to come alongside existing churches to help people find you, people that are going to be searching this website to be able to find your group, whether it's a small group or a big group, whether it's in the United States or in some other country. We want to empower people to find others, and that means that the UCA is going to be building, not tearing down, and we're, we're not going to be dividing and all the rest. What we're doing is just helping people find each other and doing some, some other activities that will foster awareness of this one God doctrine. We, we believe it's a truth whose time has come. It's the 21st century. We're in the information age. We have unprecedented access. Things can't be hidden anymore. Histories can't be papered over by specialists writing textbooks and omitting all the facts. You just can't do that anymore. The UCA wants to help people build communities that already exist stronger, and then also to be able to start new communities where there are pockets of people that could gather together. That's right. And at the end of the day, we believe that in that mission, we are stronger and better together, and that we can do far more for the gospel together than we can apart. Now, guys, the way we've described this organization so far, it kind of sounds like it's just a website, but actually we have our eye on certain other helpful activities, and a main one of those would be to hold a conference, God willing, a yearly conference. So we're looking right now at fall of 2020 as a conference where you can hear leading Unitarian Christian voices, where you can meet people, where you can just get your feet wet in the non-Trinitarian world and maybe discover for yourself that it's not a cult. There's no sacrificing of chickens behind the scenes. There's no grand controlling dark lord. But there is at least a special handshake, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we can't teach you that unless you uh, are, are fully inducted up to the 34th level. We want there to be a natural place for people, again, to have a place to land when they're just starting to figure these things out, and they want to see what kinds of churches and denominations and groups are out there. We want those groups to come, maybe even like have a table there and say, hey, this is why you should join up with Spirit and Truth Fellowship or the Church of God General Conference or Restoration Fellowship, Christadelphians or Living Hope International Ministries. So some people will find a natural home in one of these pre-existing non-Trinitarian denominations or churches. Other people, you know, maybe they need to start something. Maybe they need to get a Bible study going in Dallas, Texas, or in Los Angeles, or New York City, or Chicago, or Venezuela, or Austria, or India. They just need to be connected. They need to have a chance to, to find one another for fellowship and mutual encouragement. Well, what they do right now in many of these places is just attend a traditional church and sit in the back and just kind of accept that this is just what they have to deal with. They don't enjoy some of the songs, maybe. They would rather have more biblical language at times. And so they're already making compromises. And what we would prefer is that they have a resource where they could find somebody. Even if it's not exactly a match for them, they would at least find them to know that there may be three or four organizations within a 20-minute drive that teach that God is one instead of God is a trinity may be just the thing they need to spur them on, to encourage them. They may not find fellowship ultimately in those locations, but the point is that they found them in the first place. You either do that or you just stay and just say, well, I guess I'm alone. I, I'll just do what I've been doing and keep my mouth shut. I had some dear friends who were like I used to be. I, I grew up in basically in mainstream evangelicalism, and it was Trinitarian in theory, according to the official creeds, but in practice, it was basically ignored, except if somebody brought cults up. But I, I had some friends who grew up with the same exact background, and they finally started to study this, and they said, oh, wow, this is, this is New Testament theology. 
And, uh, you know, they, they were cultists. They weren't out to like ruin the church or something. They were just sincere believers trying to understand the Bible correctly. You know, things didn't go well. There was a kind of a script. First, they're shocked. And then they kind of puff out their chest and get in your face and say, hey, you cultists, you can't operate here. No, you can't hold babies in the nursery anymore. You can't be an usher. You sure as heck can't teach. We like you. You seem like nice people. But yeah, you can stay here as long as you shut up about these things. They realized that they were just barely being tolerated. Again, these were just the sweetest, humblest, godliest people I know, practically. And all they wanted to do was love God and love their neighbor and promote the cause of the gospel. And they didn't need this kind of drama. You know, they didn't, they needed a place where they and their kids would be accepted. And you don't have to constantly worry about whether you're quote, denying the deity of Christ or quote, denying the Trinity. They since have found fellowship like I did with non-Trinitarian Christians I admit I was scared to think about it for a while, you know, because isn't that dangerous? May, mightn't you lose your salvation? I was afraid that this was just a thing for cultists and it was probably all cultists all the way down. And, and then I eventually met some non-Trinitarian Christians and found out that you know, they're, they're just like other Christians in a sense. They come in all kinds. Some of them are in controlling groups and most of them aren't. Same with Trinitarians, really. They would tell you, my friends, that they wish they had had these options on the table. When the Trinity's podcast returns, what you, yes, you can do. So let's talk about joining. How would somebody join the UCA? What's the point of joining? Is it the sort of thing where their church joins and that's good enough, or do we want individuals to join as well? Well, Sean, there's two things that you'll see on the website. You'll find members and you'll find organizations. And the basis of the whole thing is based on members themselves. Uh, an individual would sign up and would just put some basic information in, including like a zip code, so that there would be a proximity discovery method. When you sign up, you would find out there's 20 other people in my zip code. This is you know, fantastic. So you've got individual members. Now, members could then create what's called a group, and they could designate what kind of a group it is. And then that's also searchable. So then you would look and say, oh, I'm looking for like a church or maybe a home fellowship. And you would see what kind they are. Oh, this one's a whole church. This is just a, a home fellowship. You'll find internet fellowships that way that could be on there. So there's members and there's groups. But the fundamental level, it is at the member level. Individuals go in and put themselves out there include a zip code and say, this is where I'm at, and uh, I'm basically hanging out a shingle for others to find me. Now, I grew up in the Church of God General Conference, so I was always Unitarian. And it's easy for me to think, well, you know, I have a church that I attend. Why would I want this? But I know that there are other people out there, so this website is a way for me, even just as an individual, put my name there, let them know there's somebody in Northeast Ohio who's willing to reach out and to fellowship together. And one of the things we've also done is we've provided an opportunity for people to directly contribute to the mission and the work of the Unitarian Christian Alliance. If you feel so inclined, you can choose to join uh, at different levels of membership. The first level is free. We want as many people to join that as possible. Free forever. Free forever. But if God puts it on your heart and you really believe strongly in the mission and the work of the UCA— then we've made uh, the opportunity to become a supporting member in which you can directly contribute to that. There are a variety of benefits that you would get also uh, if you choose to join at those levels of membership. You know, we're going to be announcing a, an, in more detail what some of those perks and benefits are. But at the end of the day, we want to provide an avenue for people to directly contribute and to support the movement and to really be a part of it. You know, this is a fully crowdsourced, grassroots type of movement that we're working with here. And none of that happens without you. And I know there are many people out there who are eager to contribute and really believe strongly in the Unitarian uh, message 
and they know how helpful and impactful it's been for them in their Christian faith and life, and they want to help other people to see that as well. I remember when I first became a Unitarian, I wanted to give, but I didn't really know who I could give to or or who I could support. So this is just one other avenue um, that people have if they want to directly contribute to what God is doing uh, in our world today through the Unitarian message. Additionally, we would like to promote this truth. We would like to get the word out. And how can we possibly do that without funding? Over time, what we see happening is is not just having a website and a conference, but also having a real presence in the world. And we're not sure exactly what shape that will take right now, but we know that there is a lot of opportunity out there in, in the internet and in other ways to raise awareness and to challenge the status quo of, hey, you have to believe in the Trinity in order to be a Christian. Only with your support can any of that stuff even start to happen. So I, I encourage you, whoever you are listening to this, that you would go over to UnitarianChristianAlliance.org and join. It'd only take you, what do you think, Mark, five minutes? Yeah, about five minutes. About five minutes. You, you just get your info in there. You can go much more into detail and add lots of info if you want, or just use a little bit. You can use a screen name if you're concerned about privacy. Uh, we're really just trying to make this as easy as possible to get as many people as possible on here so that we can start having our voices heard, so that we can have some visibility, so that we can have this movement really make a difference in our time. You're right, Sean. At the end of the day, not everybody can or is willing to or able to uh, write books and give conference lectures and things like that, but everybody can make themselves available for other like-minded believers to find them. That's how this truth really succeeds in our world today. A while ago, Sean mentioned the fact that information is just really out there everywhere now, and that's why we're seeing so many people see the light on this issue. And it was also mentioned that some people are just sitting unhappily in churches that they don't really agree with the Trinitarian creed of. The Trinitarian systems have always depended on most people having low information about the whole subject. You let the powers that be worry about such things. They tell you what has to be in your church's official statement of faith. In a lot of churches, it never even gets preached on and things like that. So there are some people who actually have thought about the Trinity and realize that they actually don't really agree. They don't think that's actually what's taught in the Bible. Call them unhappy dissenters, back pew sitting, you know, people silently disagreeing with things somewhat. But, you know, they have family reasons to be there and there's other things they like about the churches. They love the people and so on, but they also maybe are looking for an escape. This may be one way to find an escape. There are other people who... They're maybe dissenters, or at least they're not agreeers. They don't even know. They just simply haven't thought about it. Uh, but when they do start to think about it, they will find out that since the Reformation, there have been Christians who have said, actually, this whole tripersonal God thing, it only goes back to the fourth century. And really, this isn't part of New Testament theology. And so if we're really going to be thoroughgoing Protestants, we should roll this back as well. And we should go back to the theology of the New Testament as expressed by such important persons as the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul, John, Peter, and the other authors of the New Testament. So the website enables you to stand up and be counted, but it's also designed to facilitate contact with other people. Mark, you worked on this and developing the website really specifically for this purpose. How does that work? Well, it's intended to keep your information as private as you want it to be. When you get on there, you would have a name that you would decide, which would be the public name. It's what everybody else will see. There are people who are a little bit nervous. Maybe they do attend a regular church. They just want to be out there, though, and find somebody. And then you have a box where you would write your profile, whatever you want to say about yourself. If I'm just looking for others in my area, you know, I actually attend a, a nice group and we'd love to have you, whatever you want to say. And then every member that you find, because you might look for them in your area, there's a spot where you would contact them. That's the moment where you decide, I actually want to reach out and connect from me to them. So when you use the contact, you write a message and you click send, they will get an email from you. It goes through the UCA and they get the email and then they'll have your email address and then they can reply. And then the rest of the communication actually happens offline. The UCA is not like Facebook where we are managing all of your information and, and then we're tracking it and you know doing all the delightful things that you could do with Facebook. Instead, we've just facilitated the connection between you and the other person. So you reach out, 
They've got the email address of you. They respond to you, and then you and them are now communicating. And it's not managed, tracked, or anything through fa- through <laughs> Facebook, through the UCA. We're doing it just to facilitate the connection. And maybe if things go well, a couple months later, you revise the description in your profiles and say, hey, we have a Bible study that meets on Monday nights in this coffee shop, and we'd love to meet you if you're in the Syracuse, New York area or wherever. Yeah. Even if you're not sure you want to become a member yet, but you're interested, there's a place there for you just to sign up and start getting the email. So when we post new information on the website, you'll get it. So there's a lot of flexibility for people who are just putting their toes in for the very first time, all the way up to those who would be seriously committed and want to support the movement as a whole. We're in a high information environment now, and people are going to think about this, whether people want to or not. They're not just going to trust the experts to tell them that this is important. They just need to nod and keep on doing what they're doing. We're trying to help people not face a dilemma of being in a church I disagree with about some important things or just being a lone wolf. In truth, a lot of people who figure this out are kind of strong-willed and independent-minded people, and there are lone wolves out there. They know they need more than just the internet to complain on. They need people to love and care for them and to disciple them in the Christian life. But as of yet, it's been pretty hard for most people to find the kind of fellowship they need. Yeah, Unitarians have been very good at forging their own micro-identities, their own groups or their, their own brand as a lone wolf. But one of the opportunities that we have as the UCA is to help promote a macro-identity for Unitarians. And once that's out there, then it becomes a legitimate option, just like charismatic Christian, evangelical Christian, reformed. Arminian versus Calvinist versus open theist. That's right. When we look at the Reformation of 500 years ago, I mean, can you imagine sitting at the dinner table at the monastery or wherever Martin Luther would eat his dinner and looking across at this monk and saying, you know what, you're going to change the whole world. By the time you die there's going to be another legitimate option other than the monolithic Catholic Church. Nobody, I mean, how how does something like that happen? One person, and then multiple people, and then it gets decentralized. And now you've got all of these different reformers, all, you know, this mindset, this idea that just sort of gets out of the box, and it can't be put back in, and it spreads everywhere. (gasps) Oh! We can read scripture and understand it. There was a rush of new information through the printing press is, yes. was a big factor. Right, yeah. And I think we're living in a parallel time. About nine years ago, I recorded a video with some friends in my father's office in our, in our little church. And uh, I wrote a little script, and it was about 10 minutes long. And now it's got 187,000 views. You know, I mean, could, could I have imagined that that would happen? You know, have there even been 187,000 people that have passed through our church back home in its whole 20 years of existence? No. But this is a truth that people are hungry for, they're curious about, and they're interested to study. This is just such an exciting time to put my hand up and say, yes, I'm a member of the Unitarian Christian Alliance. Yes, I'm a member of this exciting movement that is cross-culture, cross-language, across socioeconomic barriers— and all these other things that hold us apart, that this is something that can bring us together in our own time. So I I think this is just so tremendous. I'm really excited to be part of it. And I encourage you to do what you can, to to join, to stand up and, and let yourself be counted. That's right, Sean. I'm also so excited to see what God is going to do through the Unitarian Christian Alliance. I can't wait for our upcoming events that we're very excited to announce. Uh, We're planning right now our 2020 conference So I strongly encourage everyone listening to this podcast to please go ahead and and go to UnitarianChristianAlliance.org, get yourself signed up, get your home group or your church signed up, and be tuned in to some of these updates that are going to be rolling out, because this is happening right now, and uh, you want to be among the first people that get those alerts to let you know when our conference is, uh, the dates, the locations, you can go ahead and get all that squared away. We're just so excited, and, and we hope you're going to be there. We believe that if you can agree with us on the UCA affirmation, if you believe that the one God is the Father and that Jesus is his human son, then you belong with us. You belong with us in the UCA network. You belong with us at the UCA conference, and we can't wait to see you there.
you know, that reminds me of a friend, Keegan, I was talking with a little while ago, and he was saying to me, oh, Sean, you don't understand, you know, the, I'm in this church, and, you know, the pastor, you know, I talked to him about my beliefs, and he said, it's okay if, if I stay. I said, look, you can stay, but the moment you open your mouth, the moment you say something that questions the dogma that is taught in most traditional churches, you're going to be out. And I said to him, you're not one of them. And he said, oh, yes, I am. I, I am one of them. They accept me. I'm like, they don't know what you believe. The moment that you tell them what you believe, they're going to turn you out on your ear. I said, you, you belong with us. You're one of us. Come join us. We need you. We need for people to volunteer their gifts, their, their time. We need resources so that we can get this thing going. You make a good point, Keegan. This is a place for people to land and for people to find potentially lifelong friends, maybe even spouses, who knows, uh, people to find each other and make that connection. So if you're a person who's wandering in the wilderness looking for fellowship with other non-Trinitarian Christians... Our group is for you, and we really want you to sign up and be a part of it. If you're a part of a Unitarian Christian denomination, we want you to stand up and be counted with us, and we want your church on there. If you're in a certain kind of Christian group that you think is unhealthy, uh, maybe you're looking for a change, maybe you should be listed with or without your real name and see who, who else is out there uh, who has similar enough convictions that you might want to fellowship with. This ball is just getting rolling. We're going to have a conference. We're going to probably end up publishing some things and providing some web resources that are, that are helpful. It's more than just a web directory, although that's one of the key services that we want to provide to people. You can find me on there. I've got my real name, and I hope to see you on there soon and your church or Bible study or house church or ministry. Are you a Unitarian Christian? Will you stand up with us and be counted? Please visit UnitarianChristianAlliance.org and create a free profile for yourself. And if you're part of a Unitarian Christian Bible study, house church, or church, please talk to its leadership about creating a group page so that Unitarian Christians in your area can fellowship with you. And if you're as dedicated to this cause as we are, please consider donating to the UCA, either through a paid membership or through a one-time tax-deductible gift. We've spent a lot of money on properly developing the website, and we will be spending more soon as we plan our first conference for the fall of 2020. The board members are unpaid, and the UCA currently has no employees, so all of your donation will go directly into our work. Finally, be sure to check out the blog post for this episode at trinities.org, where I've put links to the Unitarian Christian Alliance, to its frequently asked questions, to its new Facebook group, to its official Twitter accounts. And if this happens to be the first episode of the Trinities podcast you've heard, I've put some links to other episodes there, which you might find interesting. And I want to give a special thanks to board member Mark Kane for editing this episode. This week's thinking music has been the track... Ball Danders Strikes the Set by Dr. Turtle. As always, there's a link on the blog post for this episode at trinities.org where you can listen to or download that entire track. Thanks for listening. We'll see you online at trinities.org. Until next time, don't forget to love God with all your mind.